The hit play Art has been produced in more than 30 countries. It has earned more than $400 million worldwide. It was written by French playwright Yasmina Reza. Her latest work is Lifetimes 3. It focuses on the story of two married couples over the course of one evening told in three different variations. We have with us this evening the cast of Lifetimes 3, Helen Hunt, John Turturro, Brent Spiner, and Linda Eman. Welcome to all of them. I am pleased to have you here. Did I get it right that time? Yes, you did. Good. Thank yeah, you. I flubbed saying his name the first time. Uh, Helen, tell me about this play. Good God. Um, the, the couple that you two play. John and I yes. play a married couple, right. and Linda and Brent right. play a married couple. And it's, I'm going to do my best here, but okay. it's a, what I think it is, is a complicated, sexy, funny, frightening 90 minutes of theater is the best way I can put it. But to try to sum it up, it's one important, catastrophic, cathartic yeah. evening. Um, and it's three different versions of that evening. If things happened a little differently, if someone had said something differently, right. if a child had been in a better mood, how, how might this evening have gone, have gone differently? And hopefully it's a way to show these four people um, and as many facets of them as possible in one evening. Mm -hmm. the, um, the first scene about the cookies and the child. And the cookies. Mm -hmm. I mean, tell me why that, what that says to us, I mean, as she alluded to. <laughs> Well, actually, when I first read it, I, 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 when I put it down right away because I thought it was a little too close to home. <laughs> but, you know, it, it sort of takes place uh, on an evening where the child won't go to bed and both parents are working. There's pr probably not enough time spent with the child. And so he's not only hungry, he's acting out and uh, sort of separating them. And it shows a marriage, you know, that's frayed. And, you know, people find it tremendously funny uh, as cruel as it is is it a comedy yes it, but it's a human comedy yeah. and i think uh, uh, you know and it, it encompasses all facets of, of what that means because i read somewhere that yasmina the playwright didn't want it to be considered as a comedy per se all right well Linda. <laughs> <laughs> i think yeah, there's no way, because you're calling it a human comedy is yeah. right. I mean, some people also have said it's very Chekhovian. Yeah. The right. stakes are very, very high. So for the four of us playing it lightly, you know, it's not the most comfortable thing to do, actually. But it makes it very, very funny, because we're just uh, at our wit's end. And inherent in that, inherent in all of good Chekhov, in fact, when the stakes are that high, is tragedy. Yeah. You know, it's just right. awful, yeah. tragic moments. In this and what is it telling us about marriage? Gee, I, I, I don't know. I, I, uh, I just think it, it tells you that it's going to be a roller coaster. Yeah. You know, no matter what, no matter what the situation is, it's a roller coaster. Yeah. But that there are thousands of possibilities. And, and thousands of ways to see one single act. Well, that in particular, I yeah. think. Yeah. That, that all of us can look at something. Any moment, I think. Yeah. The thousands of ways of looking at any moment. Yeah. Any hesitation? Last time you were here was what, Twelfth Night? I think once that's in there, okay. yeah. I mean, <laughs> any hesitation about coming back to the theater? No, I felt lucky to find something that I was interested in. When I first read it, I threw it across the room. I don't know why. <laughs> Literally, uh, I laughed, I was intrigued, and then I was terrified by it. And then I sat down with Matthew Warchitz, who deserves, right. you know, so much the of the director. credit for mm -hmm. anything that's going right in this play. I know all of us feel that way. Um, and he started to talk about what he imagined the play becoming and how human it was and I got very interested and then as one after another of these Do you remember what he said about what he imagined the play becoming? <clears throat> um, what was it? I, well one thing is something that happens with my character at the end that you can't tell on the page what right. his intention was yeah. uh, or, or what her what the playwright's intention was about how the place that my character ends up in and, and when he described that I thought that's that's interesting. And I, I so many times feel when I'm asked to choose between black and white, the answer is both. The answer is I want both. I want both. That's just a theme for me. And me too. Yeah. And, and Yasmina said that's what the play should be about. We are not one thing or another. We are and, 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 and so many different things. Is there shades of, <clears throat> who's afraid of Virginia Woolf here? Yeah. Yeah. Betrayal. And indefinitely betrayal. Uh, and you... But you see three different versions of it. One thing Matthew said to me a few years ago was that you know, the first scene is sort of all the people in a badly made boat during a storm. And then the second scene starts out, and it's a much calmer, and then a tornado occurs. Yeah. And in the last scene, the waters are calm, 
but there's all everything is sort of underneath. And one interesting thing that the the uh, I think the play explores is how people judge themselves versus other people who are more successful than they are, or someone that they would look up to, and how that dynamic changes things within a marriage and you know in friendship. And and, and I think it's a, that's an important part. Yeah, of I was going to ask, what's the purpose of four couples? To give some sense of two couples. I mean, two couples. I'm sorry, four people, two couples here. Yeah. Right. To give some sense of, of, of looking at different people and, and people who, in a sense, show even more edges of the same idea? I think so, absolutely. But the other thing is that, for one thing, just for the, the sense of, of what happens on an evening, the fact that there is a dinner party that needs to occur and that we show up on the wrong night. Right. So you start off right away each time with something that makes the stakes and everybody cockeyed and out of, you know, out of whack. But absolutely, because there are two very different marriages. How and so? I think that for all that is unhealthy or chaotic <laughs> or catastrophic that occurs within it, that John and Helen's marriage, their characters are actually uh, Sonia and Henry, their marriage is ultimately, for all of its craziness, a good one. Yasmina has talked about that also. There's a good deal of love there, um, and yet they somehow are able to withstand ultimately the chaos and catastrophe. In the case of the marriage between Inez and Hubert, uh, Brent and I, it is ultimately not that. And so. This is ultimately not a good marriage and no, can't withstand. No, no, so that's really one can't. point right there to yeah. have sort of one different kinds of marriages showing yeah. uh, different responses and to even, pressure. Right, and even though you see bad behavior by everyone, even though you see good behavior by everyone, you do somehow, I think, leave it knowing this marriage, uh, Sonia and Henry will probably make it, and this one. Now, we, do we know why? I mean, what is it about makes one work and not? I mean, is it some core. I think there are obvious things that she has, there are obvious unhealthinesses about it, but I think actually one of the lovely, beautiful little things about the play is that, um, I know Helen's dad said when he came that he hadn't expected, you said that he hadn't expected that it was a love story, yeah. and there is something inherent in it that is a love story, and I think that's hard to describe why it is that something is so obviously just isn't going to work and something else is. There are superficial reasons why that's so. But I think the play is also about how many times in a day you feel higher than someone and lower than someone. And yeah. in, in, with two men and two women, that plays out sexually, that plays out with career, that plays out with infidelity. It play, there's always, oh, I'm on top. Ah, I just got oh, knocked down. Yeah. Oh, look, oh, yeah. now I'm yeah. at the bottom of all three. And now mm -hmm. I'm not as bad as that one, but I'm lower than that yeah. one. And yeah. that's a lot of... Just when you feel like you've caught your win, you lose it. Yeah. 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 Roll tape. This is the first scene. Um, it'll explain scene. itself. Yeah. Here it is. You said we'd be licking your boots? <laughs> I'm sorry to bring things down to earth, but Inez has made a valiant attempt to raise the level of debate. Licking our boots. Is that a turn of phrase for my vocabulary book? You said licking our boots. I said licking our boots, Inez. What does licking our boots mean? Servile? Or quite simply, courteous? Well <laughs> done. stabs me in the back, she flings up this out-of-context remark in the driest and most withering way, and I'm supposed to come up with some response? Surely, dear friends, we're not going to lapse into the completely abject. Give up this flatulent tone, Hubert. You're the only one who finds it amusing. You said we'd be licking your boots. And in the phrase, let me point out, it's the we, which is particularly unfortunate. Uh, I can understand you might envision the supplicants licking your boots. Might even be what constitutes the charm of a supplicant, but to include his wife in this tableau of prostration is a mistake. Yeah. I did find you somewhat intriguing, I must admit. I wasn't expecting you to be so crass and ordinary. And you can drop that tone as well, Sonia. What's all the simpering, the charm of a supplicant? If you go on like that, the supplicant might very well put your face in it! <laughs> Casting the two, you have anything to do with the fact that you've played opted each other before, beyond individual talent? Uh, uh, only in the sense that Linda was cast first, and then I think uh, she kept whispering in their ear that, that maybe <laughs> I would be a good idea. <laughs> did you whisper in their ear that it would be a, a good idea? Bit, mm -hmm. but I did but Matthew certainly knew, our director knew Brent very well before yeah. that, so I, I think there's a benefit to it, and I think Matthew probably, when he chose Brent, thought that could be useful, because Brent and I are good friends. But you were telling me that they're suggesting now that Virginia Woolf might be next. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to just disintegrate from exactly. John and Abigail Adams. Yeah. Yeah. You were cast before John, or do you know? It was 
was all a big no, melange. Sorry. They I were know. talking to you, the Helen, and they were talking to me. I and mean, that was a couple of years. It was before 9 11, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it all sort of, all of us mm -hmm. scattered, and then it seemed right. relevant again to look at a play about how people treat each other. Yeah. You know? Is it significantly different from the European production? No, we don't know because none of us saw it. I'm saw told it often that it is. I'm told that yeah. it's very different. It was in a proscenium. <clears throat> and yeah. Right, sorry, that's one difference, right? Yeah. Your circle, round, circling around. Or we we yeah. worked on the translation. We, it was translated the, uh, when it was done in England, but we did a new translation. She obviously writes in French. Yes, mm -hmm. but and we all Hampton participated in Translates in that. it yeah. into British English, and then we all participated yeah. in But do they, those country. who've seen all of the version, variations other than the proscenium versus in the round, say anything different about it? Are, are the characters different? I'm trying to get at this very idea different. that intrigues me yeah, in terms different. of how it was played in France, in terms mm -hmm. of relationships, or European relationships different in terms of, of custom culture, in terms of accent, not accent vocally, but accent mm -hmm. in terms of, of the play. I'm the sure there, there were differences. I think they are essentially the same people no matter where it's played. I don't think this is a play about being French. Yeah. Uh, you know, it is about being couples and... and about being and, human. And being human, exactly. Uh, I think the audiences were particularly different. Uh, we're told that in France, the audience shouts back at the production. Oh, they do a little bit here. Like, the character, like, I dare you kind of thing. Well, right, yeah. exactly. But I it mean, happens here. Brent will well, say something. And oh, oh, I do. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, no way. <laughs> and a lot of clapping exactly. when Linda yeah. gets in bed. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So you... The audience is on your side, clearly. Yeah, totally. They don't know where to that, be. But you no. don't know. Matthew well, no. warned us early well, on, night, having worked so. on Yasmina's yeah. plays, Each that they're very odd. Very different. Odd. Very different. Really? Very. Very. How do you explain that? Even within the play, because that, I think different. that's different her play. She, she writes, the audience sort of takes this ride and, and can't stand what Brent says to Linda. And then 20 minutes later, he shuts her up and they cheer. So I think that one of the things that's interesting about the play is that you don't know where to sit. You can't say she's the this one and he's the that mm -hmm. one. It's yeah. just black keeps, and white. Yeah. 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 And how much mm -hmm. of it you think is because of where the audience came from? I mean, it's, you would think that the audience is, while different, would be essentially the same when they're not sort of bust in mm -hmm. from, right. you know, New Mexico. Yeah. Well, the audience in every show is different every night. You know, it's yeah. not just our show. I mean, yeah, certainly. Exactly. more in the show. Yeah. But so more, I've yeah. Ever well, there's a level of cruelty in the show, and I think some people are comfortable with it, and they can laugh at it, and other yeah. people are. It, it, it inhibits them a little bit, yeah. and uh, I, I think it's just it's a very fragile show, just like it is in, you know, between people or like on your show. You, you, I'm sure when you're on your show, sometimes you get a great flow going, right, and everything's right, working, right. and some nights the flow goes a little in this direction and a little in that direction, yeah. and it really is pretty different. I, I agree with Helen. I think, and you can tell yeah. early on. You get a sense of where they go no. and go. No, we've been so wrong. We've, we've. Thought, I think we've all gone out there and thought, well, there's big crashing laughs that we aren't getting, and a response that we aren't getting, and we get to the end, and suddenly there are people cheering and standing. So, for me, it's been a. I, I hope I take this with me, for everything I I do from now on. That you don't know, you just do the play, and people have mm -hmm. maybe feeling things that you have no idea they're feeling based mm -hmm. on yeah. how vocal they're being. Really, the great thing about it, though, to think you're sitting there, or you're standing there on stage, and there are people out there, you know, and there's something going on between what you're doing mm. and what they are, mm. yeah. you know. I mean, it's it's especially a testament to her plays, I think. It is. Because yeah. there's something about it that's really different, that there is such a sense of recognition, and you can feel it. It's lovely yeah. when you're there, and one person in the eighth yeah. row or something yeah. laughs uproariously, sure. mm -hmm. or says, oh, or whatever. And it, her, her plays really do that. No, knowing that you've hooked into their resonance, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Roll tape, this is another scene. Um, it, it explains <laughs> itself. I love tape. this. Last time I saw him, I said, listen, Serge, depression is a spiral. No one can help you. No one can do a thing for you. <laughs> the only cure is willpower, willpower, willpower. <laughs> After that, he was three times worse. <laughs> Not at all the right thing to say to him. He was prostrate when I left. <laughs> Never seen anyone looking so terrified. <laughs> If I was depressed and somebody said to me, willpower, willpower, I'd jump right out a window. Me too. Do all of you think that if we, if we would reconvene in 10 years, you'll be acting or doing something else? No. 
I love not knowing the answer to that question, Frank. I know you're keeping I, it wide open. It was keyed off by something you had said. That's yeah. the reason I framed the question. I really, I really don't know. I, I, I both admire and even envy those who seem to have such certainty. Or maybe I don't. I don't know. But, but, but certainly, to say, this is absolutely. what I ought to be doing with my life. You yes. have that, don't you? At I this do, time. I do have that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But I just don't ever know. No, I don't know. And I think I like not knowing. Not knowing it, it, that it's something where else. Where it might go. Yeah, I think the idea anyway, especially in the arts of being entrenched in some way, yeah. seems to not be a good idea either, although it's not really an idea I have. It just seems to be generically, I mean, uh, intricately how I feel. Mm. But it seems good in this field to constantly question, why am I doing this? What am I doing this for? What's next? What is yeah, compelling me? But you at the me? same time feel like you were the, among the lucky few on the face of the earth simply because you're doing something that you love and you have an opportunity to to not only uh, be challenged but also do something you know resonates across you betcha yeah. you count my lucky stars every day yeah especially when there's so many people that want to do it mm -hmm. can't find them then you know, can't find right. them. so many really sure. talented people that's right. can't find a venue that's right yeah. that's exactly right so how about you guys you answer it all right I, I, I would just hope to be doing something that would be creative. Yeah. That's all. And I, to me, that's really. And I've done a f few other things. I've directed a few things. Right. And I just <laughs> think, as long as I could, be, you know, be creative and work with people who I enjoy being with. You know, when I was yeah. younger, I just wanted to work. Yeah. And now that's no longer the case. And now it's you like can I, work whenever you want to. Well, I, I, I can work yeah. uh, I, fairly often. Right. And but it's it's nice when you're in good company because it it, it, it that's really the whole experience. Yeah. That is the experience. And and hopefully you're doing something that has some intelligence behind it and it's entertaining and people enjoy and but th that's that's very important to me. What motivates you, Ellen? Um I guess a desire to be creative. And I you know what Linda said when you're when you say a line out of this play and you hear someone behind you go, Oh Yeah. Uh, I I so I'm so grateful for that when I'm in an audience and I see something that reflects something that I imagine only I feel or a, a, a something going on in my life that I feel so isolated about and there's someone on stage saying and and feeling what I f that's just such a gift so some combination of those two things keeps yeah. for a lot of years <laughs> making me want to do it yeah, I'm I'm resisting asking all of you about film versus theater simply because I mean but I'm always curious about it whether we're you know people who go back and forth uh, is is a search for perfect balance part of what you'd like to achieve so that you can do both in an interesting way that's a wonderful thing to try to yeah. keep going for sure roll tape this is another scene about um, Inez asking permission to smoke here it is have you lived here long a year and a half where were you before Montparnasse oh this is better it's quieter it's certainly not quiet they're building a parking lot in Rue Longelo It'll be finished at some point. In two years. Next month. Do you mind if I smoke? I'd rather you didn't. What? I mean, you, you're joking. Of course you can smoke, Inez. No one's smoking. Why do you have to smoke? She can absolutely smoke. Can't you tell her she can smoke? We're in Henry's apartment. <laughs> Cigarettes make Henry uncomfortable. There's no reason for Inez to smoke. Smoking's never essential for women. <laughs> I won't smoke. Inez, I insist that you smoke. I don't feel like smoking anymore. You plan to be bad tempered and rude all evening, Henry? SMOKE! Most. Oh, you have to cut out fucking. What? Yeah, cut out. That's all right. The whole band will come. Linda, most of the characters you've played have been strong, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah. Inez fits that pattern. No. <laughs> <laughs> so this must be fun. It really was. It was tough. Yeah. It was really tough. Tough. It was really challenging to try to find, in the the lines just as written. If someone were to say some of the things that Hubert does to Inez, I wouldn't have any trouble at all. Just <laughs> coming yes. right back. Oh yeah. Yeah. But if you're a person whose self-esteem has just been battered to death and uh, trying to find a way to show what is the obstacle that one has to override to get to there, you know. So, no, it feels very different. It was a tricky but a very interesting journey to find. Why do you think this marriage is not going to make it? He's, he's a pig. Which was also difficult for me to find. Pig <laughs> 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 exactly. <laughs> do you wish you could see yourself on stage? 
Uh, no, that's the beauty of the stage, or one of the beauties of the stage, is you can actually, uh, you know, have the illusion that you're fantastic yeah. you know, without, you know, proof <laughs> you look being in your face. If they laugh, it must be good. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, much success to each of you, uh, and to this play. Uh,